Broadcasting from Sydney, Australia, this is Front and Centre with Emilio Garcia. Brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Regret from a woman who sparked a Twitter backlash over an offensive tweet that joked about AIDS in South Africa. Going to Africa. Hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding. I'm white. She was fired Saturday from her top PR job at internet giant IAC. Featured mainly Caucasian models sporting rainbow dreads. Many viewers took to social media to accuse Jacobs of cultural appropriation. Gap is apologizing for a new ad that they put out, which features uh, children in various poses. So the problem was that there's a, a, a white kid using a black kid as an armrest. Two years prior to this ad coming out, Gap featured a similar ad. Okay, let's take a look at that. And it features uh, a black kid putting, uh, you know, their ha hand on or arm on a white kid, right? I'm just so tired of these stories. I don't know what to say. Ashley, this was only a three-second ad, but in three seconds, they managed to stir up quite the controversy. Now, in this ad, there were three women depicted, first a black woman, a white woman, and then an Asian woman. Now, the way that it was done, however, made it appear as if the black woman had washed herself with Dove soap and then turned into a white woman. Racism scandals are becoming a regular occurrence nowadays. While many people have been called out for legitimate instances of racism, many others have been attacked for the skewed interpretation of a select few who choose to misinterpret something as racist and subsequently call on similar-minded people to take to Twitter and Facebook and beat them into submission, oftentimes demanding an apology, a boycott, or sometimes the end of someone's career. We'll be looking into racism scandals after this short break. I want to take a second and ask you to go to theunshackled.net and download your free ebook, The Unshackled Battlefield. Learn about the founding principles of The Unshackled and what made the organization what it is today. And since I have you, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, and now back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. On today's episode, we're talking about racism scandals and how it seems more and more that relatively benign occurrences can now be interpreted as racist and subsequently shut down. Perhaps the most famous instance of a racism scandal was the story of Justine Sacco, who made one joke that ultimately ruined her life. Well, she was about to board a plane to South Africa last Friday, and before doing so, she put out a tweet that got her into a lot of trouble. The tweet said, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS, just kidding, I'm white. This tweet went beyond viral. Soon enough, Justine found herself the number one trending topic on Twitter. But while, so she goes on the plane right after tweeting this out. Mm -hmm. While she's in the air, Twitter mayhem ensues. She's not even aware of it because she's incommunicado. She only had 200 Twitter followers and now all of a sudden everyone's talking about her. And one of the trending hashtags during the weekend was, um, has Justine landed yet? What happened was that one of Justine Sacco's 200 followers forwarded the tweet to a Gawker reporter who tweeted it out and gave it the visibility that it needed to go viral. Now, was she being racist? Was her comment worth the backlash? I don't think so. But I thought, I'm not entirely sure that joke was intended to be racist. Maybe instead of gleefully flaunting her privilege, she was mocking the gleeful flaunting of privilege. There is a comedy tradition of this, like South Park or Colbert or Randy Newman. Maybe Justine Sacco's crime was not being as good at it as Randy Newman. In fact, when I met Justine a couple of weeks later in a bar, she was just crushed. And I asked her to explain the joke. And she said, living in America puts us in a bit of a bubble when it comes to what is going on in the third world. I was making fun of that bubble. The most recent racism scandal includes a Heineken ad, Chance the Rapper, and Light Beer. This instance of a racism scandal actually showcases very well what I think the cause of racism scandals seems to be. And we'll be talking all about this after this short break. You may not know this, but The Unshackled has its own store. The Unshackled leadership and contributors have created some excellent products so you can take a little bit of us home with you. Go to uprightmarket.com and get, oh, I don't know, the Lefty Tears mug? Lefty Tears are always delicious, but without a proper vessel, they'll go to waste. Thanks, and now, back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. 
At this point, I'm exploring the recent racism scandal that surrounds Heineken's beer ad. Uh, the ad is essentially a white waiter taking a beer and sliding it across the room. Uh, it slides like on the countertop, on the floor, and it passes a couple of black people until it ultimately reaches a person who isn't black. They're, they're not white, but, but she isn't black. This was called racist by Chance the Rapper. He claims that because the beer passed in front of black people before reaching the non-black person, followed by the slogan, sometimes lighter is better, that this was some kind of racist dog whistle. The same logic can be found behind the racism scandal that surrounded the Gap Kids commercial some time back. Gap is apologizing for a new ad that they put out, which features uh, children in various poses. So the problem was that there's a, a, a white kid using a black kid as an armrest. Two years prior to this ad coming out, Gap featured a similar ad. Okay, let's take a look at that. And it features uh, a black kid putting, uh, you know, their ha hand on or arm on a white kid, right? These are two obvious instances of misinterpretation of non-racist occurrences. But why are they happening so frequently? I think that this compilation might help clear that up. Here's this barely intelligible, not to mention ungrammatical take on President Trump. Okay, Laura, I, I see what we're doing today. We're not just being a regular Nazi, we're being a grammar Nazi on top of that. A weeks ago, we asked a pretty obvious question on this show. How did Maxine Waters, a Democratic congressman, get so rich? The New York Times talked to Waters recently, and here's how she responded to this show in our question, quoting now. I own several properties. The way he, me, talked about it is, what right does an African-American woman have to do well? He doesn't know anything about my investments, but the house that I've lived in for 25, 30 years, this idea of how could she afford that is racist, and I just dismiss it. Mark Jacobs received some heavy backlash regarding the full locks he sent down the runway on his fair models. Customers, viewers, and admirers of all colors were offended, saying this is culture appropriation. But are all white people racist? Short answer, no. Long answer, yes, of course. 10 years ago when you're a teenager, you, you, know, you walk into the shop and they automatically just jump on you. Um, How do you mean jump on you? Like, the student, you walk into the shop and not even, it's not even 10 seconds later and they're like, oh, can I help you with something? And it's just like... of you. Yeah, and it's like, um, no, like, I, I haven't even had a chance to look at something. This is why the cultural landscape allows for a select few who are seeing the world through the lens of oppression and racism to interpret almost anything as racism and then mobilize similar-minded people to do the same. Yet, an article like the one written by Damon Young, titled, We Need to Start Barking at White People Who Speak Out of Term, in reference to a scene from Black Panther, seems to provoke very few people despite openly racist rhetoric. Personally, I think that most people would think that this is blown out of proportion, and that, that, and that these racism scandals don't really count as instances of racism. But when a brand is called out publicly for being racist, they have to mitigate the PR disasters and apologize. Most of the time, since they weren't being racist, they have to apologize for insensitivity or for not thinking things through. This brings us to the centrist conclusion segment of the program. Calling out instances of racism is one of the strongest tools when making racism taboo and keeping it out of the mainstream. That being said, there's a worrisome movement to take to heart the opinion of a select few who believe that almost anything is racist as gospel, taking no time to investigate whether the person on the receiving end of the racism scandal had any racist intentions. Racism is not inherent, and there must be present negative opinions or animus towards a racial group for there to be racism. The opinions of a couple of triggered imbeciles is being taken way too seriously. And that's the end of Front and Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you to The Unshackled for allowing us to use their platform. If you have any ideas or opinions, please tweet at me at FRNT and Center or find me on Facebook. I'll read the most interesting comments on the air. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. There are always two sides to the story. So remember, keep it central. Thanks for tuning in to Front and Center. Please visit frontandcenter.net.au for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net.
and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.